Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Rio Macroeconomics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Rio Macro. Patreon.com, yeah. Patreon.com slash BKC. My friend Maurice is uh, running that. He's doing a great job. Come on down. All right, your periodic reminder, their red ink is our black ink. Stephanie Kelton, MMT. Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> you're going to find out <laughs> really quickly, okay, how $6 trillion is going to be our black ink. <laughs> what have I been telling you for years now, right? What have I been telling you? Uh, you guys don't listen. You don't listen. Uh, remember, uh, hyperinflation, hype, where are those guys? <laughs> I haven't seen them. Where, where are my Austrian friends? Oh, hell, now that gold is going up for the right reasons, they, they're nowhere to be found. Where's the tea, the tea bagged party? <laughs> you see, this is why I call it incubator economics, right? MMT. They masquerade as progressives. Yes, we're here for you. You can go peel gum and you can plant some flowers and we'll give you $36,000 a year. And we'll give you free uh, housing. We're going to give you free medical. We'll give you free, uh, uh, what was the other one? Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to pay for your college. Uh, there's so many free things in there. And what happened to the, you know, fist up in the air, revolution. What happened to those guys? They, they were just as bad as, as the tea party. Oh, geez. So, um, yeah, well, you know. What are you going to, you think you're going to be going to swimming in $6 trillion of savings, our savings, our black ink? You get crumbs. That's what you get. And that's what you're going to continue to get. And, uh, and don't give me this argument. Well, it depends how we spend. No. How you spend does not, does not matter, right? Because for profit to exist, this is very important. For profit to exist, the household must dissave. Okay? So who funds the income of the household, the productive 95% of the economy, is important. And if you have government that is going to fund the private sector, then all it's doing is siphoning those 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 trillions of dollars using you as a middleman to pump trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars to the top five uh, percent and it's important to know that the top five percent are not always the same people right they come and go it's the top one percent that typically stay there and, and even them you know they come and go but um, you're going to see it and, and here's the problem. The problem is that the more you print, the more you need to print. And when, when I call this incubator economics, and I'm calling all economics incubator because it works under so many assumptions. Everything is beautiful inside the incubator, whether it be MMT, Austrians, or anything in between, uh, King George or whatever, I, it doesn't matter. Because in the real world, in the real macro world, Things like coronavirus do occur. And you can sit here and tell me, well, you know, it's the money printing. You know, we, we can print, print, print. No, no. See, money printing is like the cross of the half moon on, on a hospital. Depends on whatever your religion is. It's marketing. The printing is not what got us into the problem. And printing is not going to get us out of the problem. You, you see? The printing is only there to backstop the risks taken uh, by big corporations, hedge funds, and so forth. I'm sure you heard the term, right? We privatize profits and socialize losses. You saw it in Europe. You're seeing it in the U.S. Remember we used to make fun of Europe? Oh, <laughs> Europe, you know, we need a federal government. Really? We were making fun of them just a few years ago. We were making fun of them. Now what's going on? States are sitting here bidding against each other. We, we look worse than Europe. We look like a bunch of clowns with this guy Trump. And, and, and remember, I am apolitical. I don't give a shit about Sanders, the left, the right, the Trumps. I, 
Trump needs to go. <laughs> this guy has committed crimes against humanity. He's got, he needs to get locked up. They weren't impeaching him now, right? They were impeaching him for other stupid things. But for this, they, they're not impeaching him. It's the hoax. It's a liberal hoax. Right? Drink Clorox. The flu is uh, worse. World Health Organization sucks. China sucks. Everything else sucks except the person with the that caused the problem. And I don't, and I don't mean cause in, in, in terms of creating the virus, obviously. He caused it because he didn't shut down and take it seriously early on. Like many of his Flat Earth, COVID-19, Flat Earth Society supporters, right? Oh, the deaths are not bad enough. Everything is fine. Okay. <laughs> 2,000 people per day are dying. Uh, could you imagine? I mean... Christ, you know, what Steve Jobs died, oh my God, we're writing movies, uh, books, movies, uh, we're crying, we're putting flowers <laughs> everywhere, 2,000 people Americans die per day, oh, fuck them, <laughs> time to open up America, everything is fine, don't worry about it, yeah, we'll get over this, uh, people are insane, but anyway, that, that's not, uh, fuck politics, I don't want to get into that, so government debt uh, equals private sector savings for the top 5%. No government can print value for the currency. I, I talked about that before. Right? Oh, the government is a price center. Really? <laughs> they just spent 16 trillion, I'm sorry, 16% of all debt ever created in the history of the U.S. And where's the inflation? Hmm? <laughs> There's no inflation. Everything is wonderful. That's why we can just keep printing. See, it's gradually, then suddenly. Keep printing, printing, printing. And oh, let me show you something. Look at the M2 money supply. The checks haven't even gone out yet, by the way, mind you. Right? 15% growth rate. <laughs> More than it's been since, what, 1981? Look at that. That's crazy. That's like the highest it's been in 40 years. How about uh, gross domestic product for every dollar of public debt? What? Look at that. Ooh, that's a beauty, huh? GDP keeps falling. So for every dollar that we create, we get less and less and less and less and less GDP. The only time that was not true was right in here, uh, 94 to, what, 2000. And ever since then, it's been, poof, forget it. It's high-powered money. We need more of it. Well, <laughs> you got a shitload of it, more of it now. We're already, I think, up to six, uh, $1.6 trillion uh, deficits. Uh, as of uh, last week, 1.6 trillion. Woo. There's your high-powered money. Let's see how much of that is going to be our savings, right? How about uh, the Fed's balance sheet? Right, it was 3.8, right back here. 3.8, right? What is it now? 3.6. It's like 6.5, right? 2.7 trillion converted from bonds to cash so what happens when that happens when you do qe yeah you're not increasing um the debt of the united states the public debt you're not doing that what you're doing is you are buying back if you're the central bank you're buying back those bonds and giving cash right so a hundred dollars a bond a hundred dollars in cash net zero but you can buy stocks with bonds. You can buy stocks with cash. You can go buy foreign bonds. You can go buy foreign stocks. You can buy real estate. You can buy whatever you want with cash. That's why I say QE liquefies bonds. So you got some toxic bonds? Don't worry about it. Go to the Fed. Give it to him. Let them worry about him. Give it to them. Let them worry about it. Right? Remove the risk. Socialize the risk. Privatize the profits. Our savings. Their red ink is our black ink. Woohoo. What about all debt? Debt securitized and loans, liabilities, real gross, uh, real gross domestic product divided by all debts. Right? Have we increased productivity at the same rate that we have increased the money supply or the money, you know, the debt? The money that has been created? No. We've been decreasing GDP relative to the amount of money. So you got money 
going one way and you got GDP going another. Even with 160 million people working, even with 3.4% unemployment, even with $1 trillion deficits, repos, lower interest rates, cheap money, increasing deficits, you name it, tax cuts, you were getting less and less GDP for all the debt that was created. So how much debt is there? Let's take a look. Let's take, oh, 75 trillion. Oh, that looks great. <laughs> Right? We have a cash famine. <laughs> or Mosler. We have a cash famine. He's on real progressives. Oh, we have a cash famine. We don't have enough cash. Yes. Yeah, so how, how does $6 trillion, uh going to do? Is that okay? Huh? Is that going to fix the cash famine? <laughs> yeah, these people are clowns. Anyway, I don't want to carry this too long. But, you know, look, 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 it's just very frustrating because I've been saying this for years and I never thought in a million years that this would happen where I can just come out and say, look, they just put in it $6 trillion, 16% of, of all debt that is ever created, right, uh, in, in weeks, basically. And what's happening? Deflation. And, uh, you know, corporate profits have been sideways since 2012, plus or minus $1.8 trillion per quarter, okay, quarterly. And this is after tax, okay? And yet the stock market is going up. Why? Well, they're buying back their stock, five to seven trillion, right? And uh, let me show you another one, and then I'll, I'll stop the video. Here's the central bank, okay? The QE at the time it was six point zero, six trillion, right? Look what happened. Went up. What did the stock market do? Oop! Right back up. <laughs> The number one, two, three, and four economies in the world are shut down, right? We run some QE and market recovers with no earnings per share, <laughs> with no uh, economy, no global economy, and it recovers, right? Because we're going to go back to work. Well, how, how are you going to go back to work? You see, it sounds great when Trump says it because it's just like, oh, work, yes, I'm going back to work. Yeah, well, you don't work for the sake of working. You are working because you're providing a good or a service for somebody. So when you have a lockdown and the number one, two, three, and four economies uh, of the world shut down and borders are closed and nobody knows uh, shit about this virus and what's going to happen, okay, you don't run out and buy stocks. That's not what you do. Uh, you sell them. You don't buy them. Because now when you go back to work, and it sounds so good, right? You got to look at the other side, right? The other side of the coin is demand. And you're going to have people that are going to drain their savings, they're going to max out their credit cards, and they're not going to be able to go out to consume. So if you could not get uh, more than 2.5% GDP growth um, with 160 million people, more jobs than people looking for jobs, Blah, blah, blah. If you couldn't do it then, you think you're going to do it now? You're crazy. You're smoking the hopium crack pipe. And that's assuming we don't get a wave two. We don't know. We don't know. Right? A lot of assumptions in there. A lot of assumptions. So while while incubator economics is telling you, yeah, yeah, yeah we're printing, everything is going to be fine, don't worry about it. We'll backstop all the, the risks. We'll give you money and everything will be fine. Uh, you won't. All you're going to do is increase in, uh, inequality. And you can tell me all about your six-point model. You can tell me all about your fiscal flows. You can tell me all the MMT that you want. But you are going to find out the hard way. I wish you didn't, but the hard way how... The $6 trillion is not our savings, it's their savings and our liabilities. Okay, remember that. It's our liabilities. And if you think that the great financial crisis uh, had a slow economic recovery, <laughs> wait till you see the slow recovery after this one. And I told you before, you cannot, no government can print value for a currency. You can't do it. You can boost asset prices, absolutely. And look at all the all, all the 
the conversion from bonds to cash, reducing the, the bonds, increasing the cash, you can go anywhere, and you are suppressing the economy because that money is not going into the functional productive economy where the 95% reside. Trillion dollar deficits and endless more deficits, and it's not going to be our savings. And I need you to remember that. And remember who told you this, right? It's me. I've been telling you this for years. So that's it, guys. Take care. Uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.